The greatest triumph of civilization is often seen as our mastery of heat. Yet our conquest of coal is an equally epic journey from dark beginnings to an ultra-cool frontier. For centuries, cold remained a perplexing mystery. Nobody had any idea what it was, much less how to harness its effects. Yet in the last hundred years, cold has transformed the way we live and work. Imagine homes or supermarkets without fridges and frozen foods, or skyscrapers without air conditioning, or hospitals without liquid oxygen. We take for granted the technology of cold, yet it has enabled us to explore outer space and the inner depths of our brain. And as we develop new ultra-cold technology to create quantum computers and high-speed networks, it may even change the way we think and interact. This is the story of how scientists and dreamers over the past four centuries plunged lower and lower down the temperature scale to conquer the cold, enrich our lives and attempt to reach the ultimate limit of cold, a holy grail as elusive as the speed limit of light, absolute zero. Extreme cold has always held a special place in our imagination. For thousands of years it seemed like a malevolent force associated with death and darkness. Cold was an unexplained phenomenon. Was it a substance, a process, or some special state of being? Back in the 17th century, no one knew, but they certainly felt its effects in the freezing London winters. 17th century England was in the middle of what's now called the Little Ice Age. It was fantastically cold by modern standards. You have to imagine a world lit by fire in which most people are cold most of the time. Cold would have felt like a real presence, a kind of positive agent that was affecting how people felt. And that fitted nicely with the most orthodox received view that natural philosophers had inherited from the Greeks, from Aristotle, out hundreds of years earlier, that there are two agents in the world, hot and cold. They function symmetrically. They can combine or separate. Back then, people felt at the mercy of cold. This was a time when such natural forces were viewed with awe as acts of God. So anyone attempting to tamper with cold did so at their peril. The first to try was an alchemist, Cornelis Drebbel. On a hot summer's day in 1620, King James I and his entourage arrived to experience an unearthly event. Drebbel, who was also the court magician, had a wager with the king that he could turn summer into winter. He would attempt to chill the air in the largest interior space in the British Isles the Great Hall of Westminster. Drebbel hoped to shake the king to his core. He had a phenomenally fertile mind. He was an inventor par excellence. His whole world was steeped in a world of alchemy, of um, perpetual motion machines, of the idea of time, space, planets, moon, sun, gods. He was a fervently religious man. He was a, a person for whom nature presented a phenomenal a galaxy of possibilities. Dr. Andrew Shidlow, a chemist with a lifelong fascination for Drebbel, enjoys his reincarnation as the great court magician. Like most alchemists, Drebbel kept his method secret. Dr. Shidlow wants to test his ideas on how Drebbel created artificial cold. 